Einstein talks about the fabric of space-time, not as this thing that you're just moving through open void space, but as a tangible fabric that flexes and bends with you with light moving and riding through it that actually changes your perception of time and space based on your speed in quantum mechanics to recognizing that in fact these objects change on the most fundamental levels simply from our change in perception. The plants, the animals, the objects are communicating to us all the time. We are simply learning the language of that. We are learning how to communicate back and forth with all of these things that already exist. When he says particle, beam, mass spectrometry, he's talking about shining light on a particle of a plant and receiving back from it the light spectrum of that plant. How much of each point in the geometry is lit up. And from that, they say, OK, that, that we can measure with this chemical vibration. That we can measure with this chemical vibration. Because guess what? Every single chemical in the universe has its own spectrum, its own light spectrum. Just like when we look at stars, we know exactly what they're made of. Because we can see in the rainbow of the star the colors and the element lines that tell us what's inside of it. The stars are singing a symphony into your body all the time. Every planet is singing a spectral symphony to you right now. Space-time is a communicable essence. It is a vibrating fabric, and guess what? It doesn't stop at the surface of your skin. You are in it. You are part of it, and everything is. Our physics right now are getting to the place where we're going to begin to understand how to change any object into any other object. There is nanotechnology companies. I've met some of their directors. They have clouds of nanorobots that are changing water into wine just by re-vibrating, going in, hitting each molecule, changing its structure. My friends, that's the Star Trek replicator. Exchange becomes about information quality. Making a cup of coffee is simple, but to replicate that cup of coffee that was made by that Italian barista on that island in Italy where they grew their own beans and roasted them themselves by the fire, and they milked that goat, and they gathered that sugar from south on the island of Sicily, and they mixed that together and steamed that milk and made that cappuccino so sweet, so good. It's that art. It's that time and that art that now has value. If you have all your basic food and technology needs and got your house, got your space, no problem. Now, what are you going to create? What are you going to be passionate about in your life? That's what becomes important. And my friends, there's other things happening too. Disclosure project. We've had free energy devices since the 60s. You put free energy systems out there. In other words, energy systems that function on the basic principles of space and time and non-locality. Problem with the idea of thermodynamics that within a system you can't add new energy to the system. Well, guess what? The universe is not a closed system. And when we master our use of energy, and energy becomes free, and we create all that we need, and we replicate the food and the water and the stuff that we have limited resources from on this planet, then what's the next step? Technologically, it's understanding simply how to travel a little bit faster than by strapping a jetpack to the back of your body and pushing yourself through the fabric of space-time. That's old school. That doesn't work to get across to other star systems. Because even if we could accelerate up to the speed of light, when you accelerate, you move your hand fast, you feel that push, that warp. You put your hand out, you let it drop. That's the warping of space-time. That's gravity pulling you down. And that warp gets stronger and stronger and stronger until you're pushing through that fabric so hard, it's warping everything, including time. 
And so by the time you leave this planet and you end up on a star 10 light years away, 10 years pass, even though for you it's going really quick. So when we begin to understand that, we begin to see that this fabric is only limiting us so long as we're trying to push our way through it. And that if I create an envelope of energy around my body, create a space that is connected right into that fabric through the fabric's geometry itself and then change the vibration of what that is that's surrounding me. I change that surrounding spectrum then all of a sudden I tell space-time I'm not right here I'm 400 light years away relative to those three pulsars instead. And when you tell space-time where you are based on what your surrounding experiential energy is, space-time doesn't know the difference. It says, oh, this object's there. Bam. Teleportation. Object transference. Faster than light travel. But it's not really faster than light because you're not accelerating. You're just changing your position. I'm here, I'm there. We're part of a symbiotic system that's a planet. We have to learn to get back into symbiosis with the rest of the collective system. We have to break down our cult of individual selves thinking that I'm a separate cell. Peace, y'all. We have to realize that we are fully interconnected with that fabric to start understanding the principles of it. And that takes care of another huge issue. Because we're talking about the next few years, we're talking about the biggest changes humankind has ever seen, and they're happening right now. And the other big issue is space. Because you know what? You want your house. I want my house. I want land. I want to be able to go home and be in my own space. But I also want it to be surrounded by community. I want to be able to go into my zone and have my experience, but I also want to go out of my zone and be surrounded by people I love. And when you can travel from this planet to other planets and create sustainable biospheres on planets that don't have them, like Mars, my friends, there's a hundred billion stars in this galaxy. And guess what? That's just our galaxy. And if you take a pin head point on the sky and you look at how many galaxies are out there, you see thousands in a pinhead held away from your body this far away. <laughs> Fill the sphere. Fill the sphere and count. You can't. No way. So is there space for all of these people that are stuck in their shanty shacks? Is there space for you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you got starships, you don't even have to live on a planet, right? So we're talking about the fundamental issues of humanity and our pressure and our intensity and our war patterning and all of that suddenly just completely whoosh, whoosh, breaking open in the next few years. We're talking about replication system, all of our material needs are provided for. We're talking about free energy systems. Basic energy can be provided and made from any point in space-time easily and abundantly. We're talking about zero point gravity. Traveling to other star systems is as easy as getting inside and pointing in the relative position to another star and bam, you're there.